strategy being used by Rebellion. And in the early game, at least, that access is going to be so annoying with the unending sustain. So there's a chance that they can do the exact same thing unless Aura becomes the ones that are proactive and try and find these opportunities early on, either in the laning phase or in the skirmishes. I'm excited, Mirko. I'm excited, Arashi. Finally, we're getting two drafts with very unique heroes. A flex coming from Aura Fire with a Lunox being placed in the jungle. And Lunox versus Frederick in the jungle, Lunox might have an advantage, but we are going to see how the rest of the teams are going to execute as we jump into the Land of Dawn here for game number two between the first matchup of Aura Fire and Rebellion Zion. So far in the emblems, nothing too crazy. Kabuki does have the gold, the Avarice emblem, which is it's gonna help him just scale a lot more away from the turtle. Cars now in the midst of it all. Jumps with the eye for a knife. Buffy with a flicker, not able to actually cancel Vincent out as he is still able to find the retribution here. As that's the final blow again. On to so many members. Buffy picks up the first blood, but they're all so low. Rebellion with one neutral objective take. They'll trade it. Just in time for the turtle take. Cars again dashing out from that Earth Shatter from Fluffy. The Onverse there and he goes for the Flicker, but it only finds Cars. It's still Vincent who wins out the Retribution battle. The Jeet Kuto finds another, but look at the back lines with the healing. Vincent is massive with the Appraiser's Wrath. Vincent is still alive, but he will fall ultimately to the hands of Facehugger. Fluffy now in the midst of it all, recalled over. Swaylo picks up the kill. If they want to risk using their damage to weather down, to melt down the big frontline members, it's going to be a bit too much, but look at the play. He's locked down, but that's going to be the healing coming in, saving highs. The Cult Ultra has been placed, and they've lost in the sustained battle. Oh, but Vincent no. has come back in under the turret. Not All currently looking at the game. Ties looking for a play here, but look at Fluffy counter engaging with the Earth Shatter. But look at what IMU was able to steal. It's the Cult Ultra brought back as well with the healing. Cars are still alive. Vincent brought back to the team. Finally, a kill back from Aura Fire as they look to climb their way. Godiva going to be able to bring Swaylo back in. Facehugger is there, but the final blow from Cars, the rookie for Rebellion, doing a whole lot, oh. but High secures the Lord. High is going to be able to gun them oh, down no. right now, jumping in again onto Godiva, but with a very good maneuver, is able to get out. Godiva jumps back in, is able to knock High's out, but Swaylo picks up the scrap just to shot some damage. Final blow as well to cut the waves out. Eye for an eye, perfectly timed. Godiva with a flicker, bringing him back with the way the dragon, the Shadow connects as well. That's two cult altars with the blessing of the moon god. But Kabuki's massive onto the back line with the blazing duet. He wipes them all. And Aura Fire are back. Guns blazing. Three for Z. What is Zion going to do oh, with oh, the oh. timers already so high? Oh. But Godiva! He's able to find a Jeet Kune Do flicker, but is not going to be able to punish Regen Narco. It's actually Cars who finds the kill back. That's the blessing. He's still trying to run away here. High is going to be gunned down there by the side of Kabuki. High finds the kill. Facehugger as well on the back line. The Lord falls to the hands of Aura. And it's the comeback that is almost just fulfilled. Definitely him at the top of the charts, but here we go, Cars. Again, oh. caught off guard, and Cars is gone. Aura Fire marching down with the Enhanced Lord here in the mid lane. And the Jeet Kune Do able to find Sway Low, but Sway Low goes with the Brilliance, escaping, getting immobilized there. Godiva in the front as well, opening it up once again as Fluffy is able to flicker forward. That's going to be the waves micromanaged by the side of Rebellion Zion. Tower but the first tower. damage from Aura will mean that it's 1-1 one to one in the first match. A turn up. The curse is no longer a curse, it's a blessing. One talent predicted Aura. It feels good, bro. It feels good, it feels good. I mean, we were talking about the drafting and even looking at it, it didn't seem like... Okay, wait, I can't say that actually. I feel like their draft was better in game number one, than game number one. Aura? Yeah. For Aura? Yeah. Well, we saw the signature confusion, right? The signature elusiveness that Aura has, has been known for now. And for Rebellion, instead, it's that straightforward approach, having the human meatball strategy, and then not having the uh, surprise effect of a glue, despite the fact that they could have gone for the exact same thing again. So, as Mirko mentioned, a bit weird in the drafting phase, but Rebellion still has a chance. It's an equal one to one right here. And there's just so many things that both these teams can try and change up, and that is what makes it so confusing, so difficult. Ah, oh, it was so close, right? It was so close. I mean, Rebellion Zion, they were already leading from that mid-game, that early game. I think that turnaround was when
they were going for that first turtle and it didn't seem like it was going to work out for Aura Fire. And Rebellion Zion were able to just really... What's the word for it? Dominate the map, right? They were able to rotate really fast. The... The what's it called? The Devil Duo that I mentioned in game. Wijanarco, Wijanarco, Wijanarlo, Wijanarlo. They were able to rotate so quickly, Snarko. look for pickoffs so well, and put that pressure on the side lanes that Aura Fire are actually known to be strong for. Oof. I mean, for Rebellion, they had so much potential. They were able to actually get so much ahead just by outplaying the members of Aura. But keep in mind that the whole during the whole time, Kabuki was still being able to farm because he was on the other side of the map. That is an aspect that they weren't really considering. And I think that's also part of the reason why they were so desperate to just go in and get a decisive fight in the top side. Knowing that Kabuki was just getting more and more farm, and we saw that how devastating it is. And I think there's a bit of a mental aspect here as well.